I've recently been hearing from a few viewers and patrons asking if I could comment on a situation currently being faced by a fellow science YouTuber, Diana Cowern, aka Physics Girl. She contracted COVID last year. She recovered, but then was struck with long COVID. Her friends and family have reached out to the public asking for help now, explaining that her condition is so bad that she is bedridden and has been hospitalized several times. The questions and comments that I've heard from you guys range from, holy crap, this is terrible, how can we help, to, but is this even real? Like... Can that really happen? So I thought it would be good to take a minute and talk about what's going on. To start, please note that I'm not close with Cowern. I have no insider information. I only know what her friends and family have shared on her YouTube channel and her Patreon. I'm more or less just a fan like you guys. Second, let me go ahead and answer those main questions that I've been hearing. Uh, You can help her by watching her videos and signing up for her Patreon. As always, links are going to be in the transcript linked below. She is unable to make money while she's in this state, so that income will help her out. And yes, unfortunately, this is real, and this can really happen. So we've been hearing more and more about long COVID, um, you know, way back in the summer of 2020, Ed Young highlighted some of the stories of what he called the long haulers. And in the three years since then, we've seen more and more people showing symptoms of this disease. Uh, Extreme fatigue that gets worse after any exertion, fevers, shortness of breath, cough, heart palpitations, anxiety, joint pain, diarrhea, basically just a full body shit show. And of course, that's the sort of general list of problems that lead to skepticism in both the general public and in the medical research field, that the people presenting with these symptoms aren't just, you know, making this all up. Long COVID, like Bell's palsy and schizophrenia, are diagnosed by exclusion. That means that there is no easy blood test that you take and then a little card pops out saying long COVID. Instead, doctors have to do tests that rule out other diseases, other problems until the only option left is long COVID. That leads a lot of people, including experts, to suggest that those are just the symptoms of life and that the patient experiencing them just needs to get over it, go to therapy, maybe get some exercise and you're gonna be right as rain. In fact, that's exactly how doctors treated patients with chronic fatigue syndrome from the 1980s all the way up until 2018. Myalgic encephalomyelitis slash chronic fatigue syndrome, or ME-CFS, is diagnosed by someone meeting several criteria, lowered ability to do normal activities, a crash in energy following physical or mental exertion, sleep issues, that brain fog of mental confusion, and lightheadedness or dizziness when sitting or standing up. It's often reported following a viral infection, like I got a bad flu and I just never got better. So if a patient checks most of those boxes, then they get the diagnosis of chronic fatigue syndrome. In 1989, the UK's National Institute for Health and Care Excellence determined that patients with ME-CFS were just out of shape and depressed after being sick. So the treatment suggested was graded exercise therapy and cognitive behavioral therapy exercise and see a shrink, basically. It wasn't until 2018 that they reversed course, admitting that actually, it turns out, exercise tends to make a lot of people who have ME-CFS way worse. That finally allowed researchers to study therapies that might work, though the disease was still seen as somewhat obscure and not exactly a funding magnet. That is, until a pandemic hit. You see, MECFS seems to be triggered by a number of different illnesses, and sometimes the patient has no idea what illness they may have had to trigger it. 
But thanks to COVID-19, hundreds of millions of people have evidence that they were infected with a pretty nasty virus, and it seems that about 10% of them end up with lingering symptoms that are considered to be long COVID. More and more of those long COVID cases, including Diana Cowern, are now being diagnosed as ME-CFS. That is horrifically tragic, but the silver lining is that all of those people who have been suffering with ME-CFS for years, decades, in the shadows, are now finally seeing money pour into research that might actually help them. For instance, back in August, one biotech company announced successful phase two trials of an amino acid cocktail that seemed to help ameliorate fatigue. Unfortunately, decades of inaction on MECFS means that there's still a long way to go. And in the meanwhile, as we declare the pandemic over and decide that humanity just has to live with rolling the dice on every new COVID infection, we're going to see more and more stories like Cowern's. In fact, just before I filmed this video, I learned that a friend of mine, another prominent online nerd, Anthony Carboni, has been diagnosed with MECFS following a previous COVID infection and then long COVID diagnosis. He wrote on Instagram, All of a sudden, my life is entirely about managing pain and energy levels. Some days I sleep 16 hours because of exhaustion. Some days I don't sleep at all because it feels like my body is pulling itself apart. I write down everything that happens because my short-term memory is shot. I spend about an hour a day soaking in a tub to take stress off my joints. Like, it's bad. Having this isn't just being a little tired. It's debilitating. Researchers note that there is no single timeline for this disease. It could persist indefinitely, it could improve, or it could get worse, which is what happened to Cowern. Her friends and family write that she is almost completely bedbound. She's overly stimulated by lights and sounds, which is a commonly reported symptom for this disease. She's unable to hold conversations. She can't even manage her own health care. When you compare that to her bubbly, vivacious personality prior to COVID, the difference is absolutely horrifying. Even though we're talking more and more about long COVID, I think a lot of people think of it just like a lingering cold, you know, some headaches, some reduced activity level, but you can still live your life, right? But unfortunately, for a growing number of people, the answer is no, you can't just still live your life. Even I was really shocked by the photos and videos showing Cowern's current state. But while researching this disease, I learned that her story is not unique. MECFS can be absolutely debilitating. The crashes people experience, they can completely sap a patient's ability to even lift a finger. The brain fog can make it impossible to hold on to a thought for more than a moment. The sound of another person's voice can cause headaches that will last for hours. So unfortunately, I'm sorry to report that while I do understand the skepticism, we want to believe that it can't get that bad. But it can. MECFS is a real disease with real scientifically established biological underpinnings and with real, sometimes disastrous impacts on people's lives. And there's ample evidence to suggest that it can be triggered by a single COVID-19 infection. Does that make you nervous? It should, honestly. I'm not saying that you should be hiding under your bed over the idea of contracting this, but you should be angry that our lawmakers and our healthcare authorities think that this is an outcome that is an acceptable risk of not wearing masks in public places or getting a booster vaccine every six months instead of a year. They've decided that it's better to take this risk. So please look out for yourself and for your loved ones, and please go check out uh, Diana's channel and her Patreon if you'd like to know a bit more about what she's going through and uh, toss her a bit of support. I really hope that one day she'll be able to get back to her former self because I know that her friends and family miss her and her audience of um, fans, myself included, miss her as well. (laughs) 
Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you loved the video, please subscribe. And if you think the world could use more videos like this and you happen to have a few bucks laying around, head to patreon.com slash Rebecca and join an awesome community of nerds like the people whose names you see on the screen right now. Thanks.